This video is brought to you by LavelleSoccer.co.uk, one of the world's best online international soccer retailers, offering free boot personalization on any order. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you a retro unboxing plus on feet video of the Puma V106. Now unfortunately I do not have the original box, but I do have the shoe bag that they came with. Um, you can see that you do have the Puma logo there on the one side, the alternate Puma logo there on the other side, the V106 logo right here, and the bag itself is decorated with that grass camel design, which is also featured on the upper of the shoe, which you'll see in just a second. So I'll get the shoes out of the bag here. And if you guys do enjoy the retro unboxing series on my channel, be sure to support the video with a like because I do go through a lot of trouble to hunt down some of these older models that are pretty difficult to come by nowadays. Now this is a look at the Puma V106, and you actually did have a chance to purchase a pair of these for yourself. For those of you guys that follow me on the SR4U Facebook fan page, um, basically anytime I find a really good deal, and this is a really great deal that I found with multiple sizes, I did post it on the Facebook fan page, and I believe a lot of you guys went for the deal. It was a really, really great price, and uh, if you do want to be kind of up to date with all these great deals that I find, be sure to follow me on that Facebook page because you will kind of be up to date with any good deals that I personally find and just share with you guys. So as far as the V106 goes from Puma, it originally released in 2006 and it's kind of hard to believe that this shoe is now seven years old, mainly because one, it feels like it was just yesterday when this shoe was out and two, it just has such a modern look. It doesn't look like a shoe that's seven years old. Um, it looks like this is something that Puma could release today and people would be really, really happy with. At the time of its release, it was kind of ahead of its time. It was the lightest shoe out there on the market, and uh, for the most part, I think it was well received, but again, it had some kind of very unique modern elements that I think a lot of people just really didn't go for at the time with that anatomical shaped toe. It has kind of like a point to it. I'll talk about that a little bit later. You can see the laces are pushed to the outside extreme of the boot, leaving the instep and kind of striking zone on the shoe very, very clean and kind of unobstructed, which I think is really, really cool. The shoe itself doesn't actually feature a tongue. It has kind of like this stretchy neoprene section here on the inside, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And you can see that the upper material itself is made out of more of a textile as opposed to a more classic synthetic or even a leather material. Now, just to talk about the colorway on the shoe, because I think that's probably one of the most unique elements, is that it does feature this gray and white grass camo design, which I think looks really, really cool and accents well with the black Puma logo here on the outside that flows well with the design. And of course, the jumping or pouncing Puma here on the instep with the lines going through it, almost giving it like a warning look, which I think looks really, really awesome. Of course, you do have the uh, visible carbon fiber sole plate there at the bottom as well, which again, just adds to the overall modern look of the this particular shoe. Now, um, to talk about the elements on the shoe itself, the upper, like I said, is made out of a textile material. You can see like the square blocking going there. And the shoe itself was available in synthetic models like I have here, as well as a kangaroo leather version, which I'll actually be showing you in the next couple of weeks because I have a pair of those as well. Um, as far as the material itself goes, it's very, very thin and pliable. As far as I know, I never actually owned a pair of these before. I'm not sh too sure on how great the durability was because of how thin and flexible the material is, um, but, Definitely an interesting material to use on a soccer shoe, especially to make up the entirety of the upper. This is the V106, so the V108 also used a similar material, but with regular synthetics kind of surrounding it, making the durability a lot better on that particular shoe. And I believe they use the same type of material as well on the V110s, at least the early colorways. Now you can see the lacing system, like I said, is pushed to the outside. There are actually no lace holes or lace loops, as you can see, and there's no physical tongue. You can see you have kind of like this stretchy neoprene wrap here. Let me get this out of the way. There's like a stretchy wrap here. I'm not sure how they did it. It's kind of weird, um, but it actually does wrap your foot really nicely when you tie the laces tight. You can see it says speed right there on the instep, which is kind of cool. And it's kind of just an interesting concept. Instead of having a tongue, um, you have this little piece here that never moves out of the way, making for a very, very comfortable fit when the shoe is on your foot. You can see that you do have an external plastic heel counter there in like a metallic silver plastic. One little Puma logo, which I think looks pretty good. And this is kind of a 
a heel counter design that Puma has recycled over the years. They still use a very similar version of this on their SL models and uh, for good reason. It works really, really well. You have your cutouts there, so it's not a completely solid heel counter. You are somewhat exposed, but for the most part, it provides that nice lateral support that you need to lock down your heel in place, um, but still keeps the shoe very, very lightweight. So definitely a good design in my opinion. Um, if you move on to the heel right here, you can see that you do have a suede heel liner. So while the shoe is very, very lightweight, which you'll see later in the weigh-in portion of the video, it still doesn't sacrifice comfort because it is very, very comfortable with that suede heel liner give you guys a look at the insole here it features that gray and white grass camo pattern as you can see Puma logo right there there's some perforations going through it although they don't pierce the insole completely it's just there to shed a little bit of weight on the insole and you can see the actual shape of the toe here with the insole itself so it definitely has a unique shape to it it's that anatomical fit um, that Puma likes to implement on their shoes. They still do it today in the Evo Speed line. And uh, obviously with the V106, they took it to a new extreme here, which is why a lot of people probably weren't big fans of this shoe. But for the most part, I really, really like how they fit. Um, as far as the stud pattern itself goes, again, this is that classic V-series stud pattern. You have four studs really close to the tip of the toe here, which really makes for good push-off points on, at the right, right at the tip where you really need it. You have your four studs in a line going across the base of the forefoot. Foot, your two support studs right there and then of course you have this very unique kind of heel stud pattern right there with your four main studs one extra one on the instep and then these two little ones right there just to provide that last resort amount of grip if it is at all necessary when you are running heel to toe so overall a very unique very cool stud pattern and it should work pretty well again I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna wear this particular pair but I'm really really intrigued by the shoe as a whole now you do have a visible carbon fiber here through this plastic covering it's a very, very thin layer of carbon fiber. It's not super stiff at all, but it is there and should cut down on any kind of stud pressure, as well as add a little bit of responsiveness to the overall feel of the shoe. So for the most part, I think it is a very good implementation of carbon fiber, and it's just not something that you see too often anymore on soccer shoes. A lot of companies are phasing out carbon fiber on soccer shoes. They might bring it back, but it's mainly because it's a very expensive material to work with. It's difficult to work with, and it generally has a pretty good failure rate when you do use it in the sole plate especially on a, such a high impact shoe like a soccer shoe. So that's pretty much it as far as the unboxing portion of the video goes. And I move on to a quick weigh in so you can see how lightweight these guys are. Like I mentioned earlier, back in 2006 when this shoe originally released, it was the lightest shoe around. Um, and even by today's standards, this is still a very lightweight soccer shoe. So I'm going to throw this pair on the scale for you in real time. Keep in mind this is a brand new pair in a size 10 US, which actually fits like a 9 US in this particular shoe. We're going to throw it on the scale. And you can see that they weigh in at 7.6 ounces, which is very, very lightweight for a shoe, like I said, even by today's standards. So that's pretty much it as far as the weigh-in portion of this video goes. And I'll move on to a quick on feet so you can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and what the sizing is like. Like. All right, here's a look at the Puma V106s on feet and against the green grass this grass camo pattern really looks cool in my opinion, especially in this white and gray color. It's kind of subtle but at the same time it's very very different. As far as the lacing system of the shoe goes, you can see it's very unique in that the knot of the laces is actually right here, almost at the side of your ankle. If I pull the laces out that I have tucked in, you can see how weird it actually does look and where the laces are, which I found really, really unique. And you don't get a perspective of how off to the side the laces are until you actually put them on your feet. As far as the overall fit and comfort of the shoe, they're very, very comfortable considering how lightweight they are. Um, they do have a slightly tighter fit in my opinion. They're fairly snug through the midfoot and have a fairly snug fit through the forefoot and toe box area as well. It does have that pointed toe shape as you can see, but my toes go pretty much right to the end and they have the overall shaping down very, very well. As far as sizing goes, it definitely does fit a little bit strange. Instead of wearing my usual size 9 US, I had to go with a 10 US in this particular shoe. And you can see that the fit and length is absolutely perfect. So if you do come across a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going up a full size. So that's pretty much it as far as the on feet portion of this video goes. And I'll leave you to my final thoughts. All right guys, that's it for my retro unboxing of the Puma V106. They actually are still available to purchase in a couple of sizes at the source where I got mine. So if you do want to check that out, I will leave a direct link down below in the description. And like I said, pick them up all you can while they're still there. They're a really great price and they're not going to last long. 
Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's retro unboxing. If you do have any questions regarding the shoe, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you guys could leave a like on the video, it would be greatly appreciated. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, be sure to hit that subscribe button for daily videos on all the latest soccer gear. And guys, if you want to follow me on any of the latest social media platforms, such as Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you can find links to all of those down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.